the second wave of industrial really happened much more in the United States, in in my opinion anyway. As it bounced around in in the United States, just as it's a strange sort of dynamic. You have the New York Dolls and and bands like that in New York that influence Malcolm McLaren, who goes to London and starts the Sex Pistols, which creates English punk, which in our personal opinion is pretty weak need compared to American punk. The punk idea somehow bounces back into the United States, but they take it much more seriously, and, and they have much more... Um, interesting bands like X and Fear and Dead Kennedys and DOA, all these bands that are teetering between punk and what became hardcore. So the United States, for some reason, seems to feed off its own corpse, in a sense, musically. It, it exports music to, the, to Britain. Britain takes it, mutates it, and sends it back. And then at that moment, the United States does something that's original with it again. And that's what happened with industrial. It sort of flew around, but obviously as it should, it, it reflects its environment. So it would be odd for an industrial band in Chicago to, to create music that was a dialogue about being in Manchester. So, quite rightly, the American bands took what they saw as the idea and then they exaggerated aspects, particularly the rhythmic aspect, they took much more seriously. And, and they turned it into this almost um, paramilitary m sort of marching music for anger that, uh, that really is most clearly summed up by the Wax Tracks label, which, which became the home of the Chicago industrial sound, which has been the most influential industrial message f for, for global music. To be honest, at the beginning we were a little bit resentful when we found out that this more traditionally dance-oriented rhythm had been superimposed over the the much more free-form aspect of what we were doing. It, it seemed like an easy way out. You know, once you put a dance rhythm on almost anything, it's easier to be acceptable. Uh, the human body responds to rhythm because the human body is based upon rhythm. The heartbeat and the blood going around the body and the various organs and the cells are all pulsing at different frequencies and rhythms and that's why we like to dance it's that basic um for us that that seemed like an easy option to make dance music having said that later on we returned to looking at dance music with rave and techno and so on in psychic tv so it's not that we were intrinsically against dance music we were suspicious of it becoming the core rhythm in a music that still had this word on it that at that time we felt was was our word not not exclusively but we felt like we wanted to shepherd it along and kind of look after it and see if it was kept pure but that didn't last very long that was maybe a year or so and then as the music started to appear in britain we'd get hold of things particularly wax tracks we could see that there was um, there was a way that it functioned that that gave a different liberation that, that the rhythm being so strong allowed other things to happen on the surface for example it gave more traditional guitar uh, an option to be reintroduced in a way that's very effective and exciting so the whole thing in a way is about volume to me is that when you actually hear the later generations of industrial live and loud it makes much more sense because it's very visceral and it makes your body excited and it makes you want to sort of squirm and wriggle and scream and 
jump around and it it sort of overrides the consciousness in a very interesting way which which takes away that sort of ambiguity of imagery that that we talked about before in a way it almost erases meaning and becomes this this very uh, organic metabolic experience for the audience and at that point then it it, it becomes uh, there's a gateway for the lyric to then travel inside the mind of the audience and that's when what the lyric is becomes really important because the the music has opened somebody up so much that you can place a message right inside almost like that and plonk it there and so that's obviously why somebody like Nine Inch Nails would become popular because the lyric has content and they placing it into that zone whereas a lot of the earlier stuff didn't really have a, a story to tell there was a, a there were a few years where there was this ex, this visceral excitement was happening but there wasn't really an awful lot of story and I think what was so smart with Nine Inch Nails especially was the fact that he learned to write these really interesting stories that people related to and add them in at that really critical moment when the music hits. <laughs> 